Hello, everyone. Welcome to Collider for a TIFF 2020 interview. I am sitting here with the team behind the Waterman, David Mayalani. Welcome to the channel and huge congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, huge congratulations on that poster. I don't know who did that rendering, but you guys might have one of my favorite posters of the whole festival. My friend Kenny Gravelis, who's a phenomenal designer of posters, uh, did that for us. And it's everything I was hoping for. I absolutely love it. And we were just talking before, but your first feature as a director, David, that is a huge accomplishment, given all the incredible directors that you've gotten the opportunity to work with over the course of your career. On The Waterman, did you find yourself referring to any, I guess, lessons learned from any of those filmmakers that just really came in handy? Oh, it's a good question. I definitely um, called upon uh, some of those great directors that I've been really blessed to have, have worked with. Uh, some of them being Ava DuVernay, who's a very close friend of mine and, and, and who was so, so helpful. Uh, but Chris McQuarrie, Will Gluck, uh, Mel Gibson, Nate Parker, Joel Edgerton, those last three being actors who've also directed movies. Um, and, uh, you know, but also being on, on film sets, you know, I've done over 40 films now. And, you know, as Ava said to me, what actors don't often realize when they go to direct something is that they actually have more experience than most world-class directors. Because even if you've been doing it for a long time, the chances are you're not doing a movie or two a year. And if you have a decent career as an actor, which I, I've been blessed to have, I, I, I have been on so many movie sets, so I know how it's meant to work. I've watched it from the sidelines, and so I've sort of had my own version of film school. And uh, they all gave me gems of advice that I, that I definitely uh, applied. Just to flip that around a little, you actually pick up a lot of the skills you need to be a director along the way. But how about directing for the first time yourself and maybe realizing new things about yourself as an actor? Did that happen here at all? Oh, big time, which is why I spoke to Nate Parker, Joe Edgerton and, and Mel Gibson, because they had done it extraordinarily. And, and that was the thing I worried about the most, because as an actor, you are supposed to rely on a fresh pair of eyes, someone beyond yourself to keep your performance in check. Uh, for me, that became my wife. My wife uh, came for the first two weeks and, I, and she knows me better than anyone. And I was like, you've got to tell me if you feel like I'm not telling the truth. If you feel like I'm winging it, you've got to tell me. So I would get the subtle thumbs up or the subtle sideways or the, or, you know. And so, um, so I would know to go again. Um, but, uh, but you know, what I found is that thankfully, because I've, uh, I've done, done quite a bit of work, you have a muscle memory of what a good performance feels like when you're giving it. And so I knew after the first few days that I was in the pocket and I could sort of relax a bit and just get on with the, the job of also being a director. <laughs> Lonnie, I kind of want to take that first question and spin it around a little for you here because <laughs> you've already worked with some pretty phenomenal actors out there. So I was mm -hmm. wondering, was there anyone in particular who taught you the most about being number one on the call sheet, but not necessarily just acting and doing your job, but the way that starring in your movie can actually, you know, set the tone on set? Definitely Mr. David out of all of them. I mean... In this movie, he he was so phenomenal in this movie, man. I, like, I remember on the first day when he um he gathered everybody on the circle and he said, "We're gonna do this with love. We're gonna do this with kindness." That's exactly what you did, by the way. Um, he handled every situation so eloquently. He let me know that I can challenge myself. This movie challenged me a lot. I mean, I was afraid of the dark. I was afraid of heights, and there were so many nights where we had to be out in like we were in the middle of nowhere. By the way, we had to go hitchhiking. It was very enjoyable. But um, Mr. David definitely taught me everything that I need to know during this movie. You're afraid of some things there. Amaya, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is uh, the instance with the, with the spider. <laughs> is, is that how you would naturally react if uh, a spider really fell on you? Um, it, I, it was actually very interesting to film because there was no bug. And... Um, it was such it was such an incredible scene to film and watching it was very different than actually filming it but no i don't think that 
Well, there was a lot, so I might have acted that way. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I probably would have. <laughs> You also get some A plus lighting at the end of that shot. And I love how that motif comes back later on in the film too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Am I I'm, glad, I'm glad you noticed that. Very oh good. yeah. That that is that's definitely a stunner right there. Am I I also wanted to ask you about Joe's style, which definitely caught my eye. Is that something you got the opportunity to develop with the costume designer much? Funny story, I got to the production office for my very first fitting and what I was wearing that day was exactly what Joe would wear. They were like, we don't even need to dress you. <laughs> so I developed more of her personality and kind of her emotional trauma more than her fashion sense just because that's where we defer. Um, but yeah, the fashion, the fashion was very similar. How about uh, for you, Lonnie? Is there, are there any aspects of Gunner that you can really connect to? Are you a big reader? Or are you an artist yourself? I draw a lot. And in this movie, there were, there were, oh my God, there were so many professional drawers on set, sketchers on set. I, I got helped so much. I'm so much better now. But I can, I can relate to Gunner in a lot of ways. Um, I, feel like, I feel like any black boy could. I mean, if you look at Gunner, uh, you can see a representation of yourself if you're like me, if you're a black kid like me. Uh, if, I, if I look at Gunner, I see me. If I look at my this family in this movie, I see me. I see my mom and my dad. But I, I think that me and any other black kid can relate to this movie a lot. I love uh, seeing really detailed production design, and you definitely have that in Gunner's room. So were there any details in the room that really caught your eye, Lonnie, and kind of told you even more about the character than what you already know? Every single sketch, just the way that he sketches, he's so, he's just so smart. <laughs> it just gave me an idea. The first day we were there, I, I saw his room. Just every sketch and it just made me think he was just so smart. He was, he's a very cool kid. I'll say that. Did you get to keep anything? <laughs> very cool kid. Uh, yeah, actually. Wait. Um, did I get to keep anything? Didn't we, um, didn't we give you the sword? Didn't we give you the sword? Oh my God. How, how did I forget that? Yes, I, I got the sword. Forget. How can I forget that? I am, I got so excited. You can see me. I was running around the whole set. Um, they gave me, they gave me the samurai sword, the gunner. I mean, I can't open it. Mm. But but it's it's still really <laughs> that, cool to have deliberate, it. deliberate, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it's still really cool to have it. But yeah, yeah they gave me. Things. It's a really cool thing. They gave me like a uh, like a pro. They like gave me like a fake one that was really cool. It's still hard, but yeah, very very cool. So another scene in the movie that I really loved is that moment where Gunner shares his drawings with Joe and. You know, it was just making me think about how hobbies can bring people closer together. So, I mean, other than acting in your craft here, do the three of you have just a random hobby that you find brings you closer to other people that excites you to share with them? I enjoy working out. I, I, I enjoy fitness. Um, I have uh, I have three sons and they all, uh, they, they all have taken it up as well. You know, we're blessed to have a gym at home. And so that's something... We all share. None of them can beat me in an arm wrestle yet, but uh, I'm mm, sure. I remember how many times I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're going to keep trying. But that, that's something we enjoy doing as a family. How about for you too? A hobby of mine is obviously music. Um, I play piano and guitar and I've been writing music. Quarantine has given me a lot of inspiration. And yeah, it connects me to other people. I'm always writing about the people in my life and the experiences I'm going through. So yeah, I always, I'm always playing a good tune for my mom. I actually started making music too. There's nothing else to do. I actually started making music too, but <laughs> definitely music, working out, probably watching TV. I do that a lot, but I love working out with my family. <laughs> I don't mean to flex, but ah, you know. <laughs> I don't mean to flex, but I love working out. It's, it's really fun. Those are definitely the hobbies we share, me and Mr. David. And, Mark. and now I have to ask, what's the last thing you binge watched? Probably Umbrella Academy. I watched the whole season in a day, and every season is like two or one hour. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a time commitment there, but a very good one to make. <laughs> the season's excellent. 
David, I did want to ask you about working with Rosario, who's phenomenal in the movie, but she couldn't join us today. And specifically, I wanted to know what you could do for her as a director to kind of support her when she's jumping into such heavy material and a difficult headspace to be in. The greatest lesson I learned with so many of these directors I've worked with is hire great people and get out of the way. You know, and Rosario was just a dream. I mean, I had a dream cast, um, not just Rosario, but Maria Bello as well, and Alfred Molina. My wife, Jessica, is in the film as well, along with these amazing young, young performers. I had the same thing with my DP, my costume designer. You've already talked about production design. When it came to Rosario, she just, I always knew that her character was the heart of the movie. But Rosario has so much heart. She gives so much love. She is so funny and light. And in some ways, someone who has that much light in them, that's, that's why you feel so much for that character. And that's why you understand why Lonnie's character is so desperate to help her, to heal her, to, to get her out of harm's way. And that's not something you can necessarily put on the page. Rosario brought that. Yes, I tried to guide her towards it, but my goodness, what, what an extraordinary uh, uh, person to be blessed with uh, in mm -hmm. that role. Absolutely. And Lonnie, you have your work cut out for you here too, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, the material out in the woods or, you know, just emotional heavy lifting. So when you look at the shooting schedule for this movie, do you kind of like circle a day and say that's going to be the most intimidating day of the bunch? I was definitely very excited for the bug scene. Weird, weird, I know, but I was definitely excited for the bug scene. You can ask everybody on that set. Uh, in, in the scene, I was I was playing with him, <laughs> but uh, I was super excited to meet the Waterman. That was definitely going to be a really fun and scary scene to shoot. He was actually um, he was actually tall in real life too, so it was definitely even easier to play that role of that scene. But man, <laughs> man, this whole movie was just so enjoyable. <laughs> And Amaya, I, wa I wanted to ask you specifically about the scene where you have to talk about the Waterman, because it isn't easy commanding a scene like that and dealing with a lot of dialogue and exposition, but you do it in a way that even without the drawings conjures some visuals. So how do you kind of prep for that and make sure that you're delivering it in that really engaging way? Thank you. I don't know. I think it's my favorite part about this entire industry is I just fully dive into the character and I really become that character and I just have to you just have to feel what you're saying and I'm glad that it came across well but um yeah it's it's kind of it's simple for me I just have to really put myself there and envision it actually happening to me and envision actually telling the story and luckily I was surrounded with David and Lonnie and just everyone was so incredible that they could really just put me there in that mental space. I, I'm endlessly fascinated by like local legends and folklore. And I know Emma wrote the script here, but David, I was wondering if you did any research into some actual legends that might have uh, specifically pertained to qualities of the Waterman? Yeah, absolutely. Even in Oregon, where we were shooting, I can't remember if it was, it was the, the Green Man or something like that. There were, there were plaques all over uh, the city of Portland with this um, sort of... Uh, um, uh, figure with long arms and, you know, it had its own local legend. And growing up in the UK, we definitely, you know, the Loch Ness Monster and Jack the Ripper and all these, you know, local le le legends in, in the UK. And then also I'm of Nigerian descent and we have so much mythology, so much folklore, so much oral history that is passed down and down and down. And of course, kind of you know, you, the conflation between what actually happened and what's uh, become a, a myth is, is very much in Nigerian tradition as well. So it was, it was something, and that's why we've tried to weave in sort of African elements. There's some of the music that is evocative of that. There's some of the costume or the production design that's also evocative of that. We wanted it to feel like a new myth, but also a world myth, even though it's taking place in this in this tiny town, uh, something that anyone, anywhere, any kid anywhere um, could, could, could relate to. And, you know, and I just wanted to, to chip in as, as well. I can't overstate how blessed I was to have Lonnie and Amaya. Um, you, you know, the emotional intelligence of these two as performers is, is just not something you see every day. Uh, I, it, is a, it is something you can't teach. 
It is something they just had. And I remember their chemistry read, just me feeling, okay, we have a movie. Uh, because without them, we just don't have a movie. And, um, you know, as much as they learned from me, I really mean this. I learned from them because there is a, there is a rawness and a truthfulness that comes with new performers who are such sponges um, but are so open um, that sometimes when you've been doing it for a while, you can lose a little bit of that. And they just came at everything with such um, enthusiasm and, and talent. And I, I was just, you know, it's going to be a tough experience to talk for me. <laughs> Could you two feel that spark during that first chemistry read? Or is that something that had to further develop as you inch closer to principal photography? I mean, I kind of, I liked you from the start. Yeah, I, mean, I liked you from the start. <laughs> yeah, no, my first impression of him, I walk into the chemistry read and I sit down with my mom and then he's walking down the hall, pushing his little brother Ryan oh. in the stroller. And we just like make eye contact and he looks away really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait, at that point, did you know Amaya was in it? Was it kind of like seeing her and like feeling those nerves of, oh my God, like in a little bit, we're going to be starring in a movie together. I mean, at the, at the read, she came ready. She came looking like Joe, but <laughs> yeah, me and her definitely had a good chemistry. And I mean, I liked you from the start. We definitely became good friends. We had a good bond in the movie. So yeah. I wanna, it, I wanna... it, it, was, it was palpable. It was really palpable. <laughs> I would believe it. Um, I wanted to ask you two a little bit about David behind the monitor. This has become one of my favorite things to ask about, but how do you guys know when David is really feeling a take? What does he faces, do behind the monitor? The faces, the faces, definitely he gets behind so, the monitor. He gets so into it. He would like bite his nail. If you did yeah, it really he would, well, he would do yeah. a good pick. Mm -hmm. He was, you could always tell, like, I would just look to the side after they said cut and I could just tell, I was like, all right, we're- Oh my God. I remember all the times that, that um, one of us would at least nail a scene and he would, he would jump up in the air and kick his feet. He would yell it, nailed it! He, it would be the, the funniest thing to see ever. And if, if we're in a scary <laughs> scene, when you, if you look at his face when he's looking at the monitors, he'll be like, oh, ooh. <laughs> it would be hilarious. <laughs> We're gonna have to see B-roll of this eventually. You're gonna keep making movies. I'm not gonna catch it. Oh, uh, it's true. I, I I I get into it. I definitely get into it. <laughs> As you should. So for the two of you watching David make the move from acting to directing his first feature, I don't know if you guys have any interest in doing that yourselves. But just for right now. Is there any particular job on a film set that you would really love to learn more about that you haven't really had the time to yet? I would love to learn more about directing and writing. I'm always writing things and I'd love to eventually direct in the future. But one thing about David is he, he didn't seem like it was his first time directing. It was like I was working with a seasoned pro, you know, he was just, he's so intricate and so articulate about everything but he's also so personable and professional and when I do eventually down the line direct I am definitely going to take bits and pieces of how he made me feel as an actor and I hope that I can also do that with other people make a film and then we'll have this conversation again <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> how about you Lonnie anything in particular on the film set that you want to learn more about yeah, definitely, definitely being a director. I remember earlier, I would like to be a cameraman, but no, uh, I changed my mind. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think I would love to be a director. And the things that Mr. David did in this movie was just mind blowing on how, how he could be a, a director and an actor in the movie, but just handle every situation just so eloquently and be so soft spoken with everybody, especially the actors in the film. Um, sometimes he would, he would even tell me to take a beat when I'm struggling with a scene. But um, yeah, I definitely think that I would love to be a director, <laughs> directing the movie, uh, making all the faces that he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, definitely do a good kick. Yeah, definitely do it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all the important lessons right here. Guys, thank you so much for chatting with me about the movie today. And again, huge congratulations. 
Thank you. Thank you so, so much, much, Terry. Bye-bye. Thanks for everyone out there. The Waterman. Keep an eye out for it. Uh,